In the heart of two Texas towns sits a petrochemical plant. As a kid growing up here, Jill Pierce drove by it thousands of times. So this is what we would drive through every morning and every afternoon on our way to and from school. But until recently, she didn't know that the plant put a colorless gas into the air called ethylene oxide. And she didn't know that ethylene oxide causes cancer. And every time I came to this area right here, I would just try to hold my breath. This is Port Natchez, Port Natchez Groves as we call it. Most of the people that live in this area work at those plants. But a man and a woman shouldn't have to sacrifice their life or their health to make a living for their family and put food on the table. And that, in many cases, is what these people are being asked to do. We call ourselves the Lucky Seven because even though there's eight of us in the group, we all say that we're lucky to have seven best friends. When the first of our Lucky Seven group was diagnosed with breast cancer, she uh, invited us all to dinner one night. She said, girls, the statistics are that one in seven or eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer during their lifetime. There were eight of us and I was the one. And I was like, you know what, if one of us has got to be it, I'm glad it's me. And little did I think, we know. Yeah, little did we know. We came to Poor Nature's Grows High School and we were in drill team. We would start in August before school started and we would do two a day practices on this practice field. Then when school started, we practiced every single day after school for about three hours. While the Lucky Seven practiced here, day in and day out, down the street, one of the largest emitters of ethylene oxide in the country was spewing dangerous amounts of the gas into the air. So January 11th of 2011 is when I was actually diagnosed. I'll never forget the nurse asking me, she said, where are you from? I said, Port Natchez, Texas. She said, are you by all those plants? And I said, yeah, I went to Port Natchez Groves High School. And she literally said, did you perform on that field of Port Natchez Groves High School? I said, yes, I did. I was in drill team. She goes, wow. She said, we have seen so many patients from that area. The Intercept obtained this study of the risk posed by ethylene oxide near the plant. The yellow rings referred to the levels of cancer risk based on EPA emissions data. On the fields where the Lucky Seven practiced, the concentration is about 200 times higher than the EPA's safety threshold. At the elementary and middle schools where Jill and her twin sister went, the concentration is 400 times the EPA standard. So we went to school within, is that half a mile? Across the country, lower income communities and communities of color are most affected by ethylene oxide pollution. People living within two miles of the Indorama plant are mostly white and have an average per capita income of less than $30,000, but the toxic plume also covers nearby Port Arthur. Here, the cancer risk from ethylene oxide is still 30 times the EPA standard. We are literally surrounded by refineries and chemical plants on the east end of Port Arthur and on the far west end. Many of those people are African Americans, people of color, and many of those people suffer from the illnesses that I mentioned earlier, like respiratory illnesses, liver kidney disease, uh, um, asthma, chronic asthma, and cancer. All told, the model reveals that the emissions from this one plant elevated cancer risk across an area that's more than 1,000 square miles. This model is based on emissions of about 22,000 pounds of ethylene oxide a year. But in 1987, the year after the Lucky Seven graduated from high school, the plant actually released more than 161,000 pounds of the toxic gas, elevating this model's risk by a factor of seven. Today, three of the lucky seven have been diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh yeah, I was diagnosed in December of 2015 on the 28th and- Like, I felt like everybody was kind of in shock. We were. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yes. And then Lori came and took care of me while I was going through cancer and ended up with a ended up with cancer. So she tells everyone I gave her cancer. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> with you, huh? <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to make it without Dodie, Lori, or the Lucky Seven. Radiation was a lot harder than chemo. Um, and let me go through a couple of these. The two days before I finished my last chemotherapy treatment, my father died unexpectedly. He also had cancer. Um, he worked in the refineries as well. He did smoke. So um, a lot of his was in the throat and in the neck. While the Lucky Seven didn't know about the risk of ethylene oxide, it turns out that the EPA did. Three years after the friends graduated from high school, this EPA document showed that the gas caused a lifetime risk of cancer between 1 in 10 and 1 in 100. And ethylene oxide is only one of several pollutants coming from the plant. The 1989 EPA document noted that another chemical, butadiene, separately posed a greater than 1 in 10 lifetime risk of getting cancer. That's the biggest risk that any fence line community in the country faced at the time. Many of these chemicals, some of them independently, are having a serious impact, like 1,3-butadiene, ethylene oxide, but we have yet to understand cumulatively how they are impacting our bodies, so that's yet to be seen. It's time for these industries to do the right thing and spend the extra buck to reduce the emissions and the chemicals which they are dumping into the air that is basically killing us. Still today, regulators have not informed residents of the risks of living near the plant. And many residents of Port Natchez and Groves, Texas, still don't know about the dangers they face just from breathing. They just, they're not being held accountable. Whoever was responsible for oversight should be in prison. It's very disturbing. I relied on them to protect my family. And apparently they didn't. <laughs>